So Parallels Desktop 26 has just launched, and it's still the best way to run Windows 11 ARM on any Apple Silicon Mac. This update introduces a brand new version numbering system that now matches Apple's. So Parallels 26 lines up perfectly with macOS 26 Tahoe, and it's fully optimized for the new operating system with fixes to keep everything running smoothly, plus all of the great features from recent versions, like Apple Intelligence writing tools inside of Windows apps, OBS virtual camera support, and even x86 virtual machine emulation on ARM. And in today's video, I'll be walking you through an updated, complete step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set up Parallels 26 with the latest version of Windows 11 25H, so you can unlock access to Windows apps and games that simply don't work on macOS alone. Whether it's productivity software or your favorite PC gaming titles, I'll show you exactly how to get it all running on your Apple Silicon Mac. And for a limited time, there is an absolutely huge 35% off discount. So make sure to click the link at the top of this video's description. Every purchase helps to support this channel and the content that I create. However, if you are interested in just trying this out for the very first time, you can actually just go ahead and use the free trial. You can click the try free button and here we can make full use of a 14 day free trial here. Just enter your email address, agree to the terms and conditions and press the submit button. If you do decide to make a purchase eventually, remember to use my link in the description to help support this channel. Once you've entered your email address, you'll be taken to the download page for the trial. Just click on download Parallels Desktop and then go to find your own downloads and double click on the install Parallels Desktop DMG. Then double click on the icon. Here we're just going to press open. Then we're going to type in our password and then it's going to start initializing Parallels Desktop. Here it's saying that Parallels Desktop is now starting. So just let that load up. And once that's opened, it says here, we have the option to download and install Windows 11. So of course there are other options that we can choose. For example, we can download Mac OS, Linux, Fedora Linux, Debian, and Kali Linux as well. But today what we're going to be doing is installing Windows 11 straight from Microsoft. And this is a really easy process. Just click on get Windows 11 from Microsoft and then press continue. This is going to download and automatically install Windows 11 and set it up as a virtual machine on your Mac. So just click install Windows here. Here it's saying that it's preparing to configure, downloading, and then it's going to go ahead and quickly download and install for you. So this just depends on the speed of your internet connection. Just wait for that to finish. Now it's saying validating. So now Windows 11 has started and it's gonna go ahead and install the virtual machine, which should take about five to 15 minutes to complete. So it says here that the PC will restart several times. This might take a while. So now Windows is continuing installing. Make sure not to interrupt this process. So now we can see the Windows 11 logo pop up and that means that it's gonna boot up for the very first time. And now it's going ahead and starting to do updates. Good things are coming your way. Now it's saying hi getting things ready for you. This may take a few minutes. So now it's saying the installation has completed, click to continue, and then we need to accept the Windows licensing agreement, press accept. And now it says here that Windows 11 has installed successfully. So this is all very well integrated. We have the Parallels branding here within the Windows 11 desktop environment. And now basically Windows 11 is fully ready to go. So one big tip is that we're going to maximize this, and then this is gonna fill up the entire screen of the Mac. So what I'd like to do is to right click on the desktop of Windows and then go to display settings. And personally, I like to change the scaling down to 100% so that we can fit more desktop on the screen. Another tip is that if you find that your mouse cursor is locked into the screen, you can press the control and option key and then that'll toggle the ability for your mouse cursor to escape out of the window. And so that's really handy for getting in and out of the Windows desktop environment quickly. So here you can see we have the full version of Windows 11 Pro running on the Mac desktop on an Apple Silicon Mac. So here it's detected that we are using Apple Silicon and it actually performs surprisingly well, especially considering that this is a completely virtualized environment. So one big tip that I do recommend doing is making sure that you change the CPU and RAM allocation of the virtual machine. So to do this, what we need to do is to shut down the virtual machine from within. So just click shut down here from after pressing the start menu. And then we're gonna to go to the parallels icon at the top here and then go to preferences and then go to control center. And once the virtual machine shut down, we can press the cog button and then go to hardware. So now we can tweak the CPU and memory allocation here. Automatically it's set four CPU cores and eight gigabytes of RAM, but you can change this to manual if you like. And what you can do is change to half of the number of CPU cores, depending on the number on your M Apple Silicon Mac machine, and also half of the memory. So because I've got 48 gigabytes, I'm going to change mine to 24 gigabytes 
of memory. You can check the number of CPU calls that you have by going into more info and then go into system report. And then you can see here the number of CPU calls involved. So normally I'd say something like half of the number of total calls, or you can also do half of the number of performance calls as well. That'll work quite well. So what I'm gonna do is to change mine to six CPU calls, and then I'm going to relaunch the virtual machine. So just close this and then press play to open this again. So of course, one thing that you can do is download and install many Windows apps. So for example, the Windows version of Microsoft Excel manages to have several features that the Mac version doesn't have. So this can be a really good idea to use this edition instead. And you can do this by accessing the Microsoft Store and then logging into your account. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. And uh, once we're logged into our account, and let's say you have a Microsoft 365 subscription, you can just press install and it'll download and install. We'll just allow this app to make changes. And it's basically gonna seamlessly download and install this official Microsoft application. So now it's saying here, we're all set. And then I can go ahead and open up the full version of Microsoft Excel here. Just need to accept the licensing agreement. Then I can go ahead and use the full version of Microsoft Excel on a Mac. We can also do other things on the Microsoft Store. For example, downloading the Bedrock edition of Minecraft, which is different from the Java edition. The Bedrock edition allows us to play with console and mobile users, whereas the Java edition doesn't. Here we can install the game in its default location. Press install. Here the Microsoft Store handles the, the full installation process. And then just go ahead and press play. And then Minecraft Bedrock Edition can load. So all we need to do is sign in. So here you can see we have the Bedrock version of Minecraft installed. Here we have things like native controller support. And we can also do things like access marketplace as well as realms and play the more kind of curated Minecraft experience with other console and mobile users. There are tons of options that you can play. They're not necessarily better than the Java edition of Minecraft, just different. And you can go ahead and join in with a different crowd. We can even push up the render distance and it still holds up, working pretty well, even though this is running through a virtual machine. It still doesn't look too bad. And another thing you can do is set up a controller. So all we need to do is to go to the host Mac settings, go to system settings here go to Bluetooth and then on your Bluetooth controller. So here I've got an Xbox series controller. I'm going to press the sync button until it starts to flash. And you'll see under Bluetooth devices at the bottom here, Xbox wireless controller. We're going to go ahead and connect. And then this is going to turn into a solid light once it's fully connected. And then under gamepad tester, you'll see here that the controls are being detected. And we can also run this in games as well. So here, for example, we can play Minecraft with a controller. So this isn't natively supported on the Mac OS Java edition, but you can use it directly using controller paired through macOS and Parallels will just go ahead and pick it up. So of course, one thing we can also do is to download and install Steam. So in order to do that, we can just open up the web browser, which is Microsoft Edge, and then we can just do a search for Steam. And what we can do here is to download and install the Windows version of Steam. So from the Steam web page, just go to the About section and then click on Install Steam. So you can see that the Windows icon is here. So that means that we're gonna be downloading the Windows version of the Steam client. So under here, we're just gonna go ahead and open up Steam once it downloads. Press yes here to allow, and then we're gonna close the browser and then click next here to install Steam. So just go through the default installation process and then click run Steam. It's gonna do an update. And once that's installed, we can go ahead and log in with our account name or scan a QR code with a mobile device. So now that we've installed Steam, we can basically go ahead and purchase and install many games. So a lot of games don't necessarily work. We basically have support for up to DirectX 11. So unfortunately, DirectX 12 games aren't supported, but you can easily play a game, for example, Portal 2, and that'll work relatively well, especially considering that this is a Windows only the game. So just go ahead and press install and this will go ahead and start the download process. So once the game is finished downloaded, we can go ahead and press play. It's going to go ahead and launch. So this manages to work pretty well, even though this is a 32-bit x86 game. It's being emulated by Windows 11 ARM to the ARM instruction set. And of course, it's running in a virtual machine. Portal 2, of course, used to have a 32-bit Mac port, but unfortunately, it's not supported on Apple Silicon hardware anymore. And virtualization is basically the perfect way to get older titles like this working on a Mac. Windows 11 ARM is also the only way to get certain anti-cheat games running, for example, GTA Online and Escape from Tarkov, which now support BattleEye on the latest versions of Windows 11 ARM Canary running on Apple Silicon hardware. If you wanna find out how to do this, then make sure to click on the tutorial link in the description. And really right now, there's never been a better time to buy into Parallels. Right now, they're offering a 35% off through my link in the description, so make sure to click on it. If you somehow missed this discount, then make sure sure to use the coupon code AppleWiki10 for a 10% discount in the future. Every purchase helps to support this channel and the content that I create. So anyway, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.